Hello watchers and welcome to this new video which is not discussing Reaper or any sample library which is the usual content that you could expect on this channel. Today we are looking at OBS Studio. OBS stands for Open Broadcaster Software which is the software that I'm using to produce my videos or give lectures on various different topics like programming and all the stuff that I do on a daily basis. OBS is a huge software and we could do a lot of different things here, but this first video will be covering how I set up my OBS so that I can mix my microphone with my loopback device, which usually streams screen reader plus sometimes also music and how I can control different volumes, how I can mix them so that streaming platforms like Twitch or YouTube will receive my mixed audio output. But when recording, I get different audio channels so that I can post process them whenever I want to within Reaper before mixing them and posting them, for example, on YouTube. Stay tuned, let's get started. So unlike the usual Reaper window, we are now sitting in front of an OBS window. And I can definitely recommend you to upgrade to the latest version, which at the time of this video is 28.0.2, which is more accessible than the previous 27 version. And it fixed some accessibility issues here. So that's why I definitely recommend to upgrade to this. OBS has some nice features like you can record specific applications instead of your entire system audio, which is what I do by default. but if you're planning to, for example, stream on Twitch or YouTube and you're planning to stream one specific application like a game, for example, and don't want everything else to be streamed as well, then OBS 28 has a feature which allows you to capture the audio of just a single specific application, which is neat. And I definitely recommend you to check OBS out. It's awesome, especially if you want to do all kinds of different things like streaming, recording stuff, giving lectures, demonstrating things via Zoom, WebEx, whichever conferencing tool you're using, it doesn't matter. OBS will probably be helpful to you as well. And here's how you can set up your audio so that you have one channel which contains everything and separate streams for all your individual audio tracks. So first of all, you have to go into the OBS settings with the file menu. So hit Alt, scroll down and hit Enter on settings. File Collapse Alt plus F. Menu. Remax Recordings Alt plus M. Settings Alt plus S. And when you hit Enter on that, your screen will restart mumbling quite a lot. That is due to some accessibility things and something is actually scrolling pretty fast through the OBS window or something like that. Some weird glitch here. Just ignore it until it says general, I think. Let's let's see here. Simple. Yeah, it says general. As soon as that's done, you're good to go. And you need to go down because this is the list of the settings, the categories. We need to scroll down. Output. We need to go to output. Let's tap here. Output mode combo box advanced down. Now you need to select advanced here. In my case, I have already selected advanced, but you might actually be configured to see simple. Simple. So if you're seeing simple, then just press arrow down once advanced. so that you have on the advanced settings. Streaming tab control. That is the streaming tab control, which is after pressing tab once more. And that is what we need to check first. Let's tap once. Grouping. And another time. Streaming settings grouping. Track one radio button checked. And there we go. That is the track. So OBS can have up to six different audio tracks. By default, it will stream track one to Twitch or YouTube or whichever other streaming platform you're using. This is because streaming platforms do not support multiple audio tracks. You couldn't, for example, send an audio track with and another track with audio screen reader that is simply not supported by most of the streaming platforms. I don't know any which is doing that. So OBS allows you to send one audio track to Twitch. And this is, in my case, track one, which we will have to make sure that it contains the sum of all the audio channels that we have. Probably, in my case, my microphone plus my loopback device. That's the first setting that we need to change here. It's a combo box, a radio box. You need to select the one track that you want to send over to streaming websites. If you're not streaming at all, just ignore this setting. 
Now shift tab. Grouping. And once more. Streaming tab control. And use the right arrow key. Recording tab. For recording. Now, now we've gotten to the interesting part. Let's tab. Grouping. And a few more times. Recording settings grouping. Generate file name without space checkbox not checked. Recording settings combo box. Use stream encoder. Down. Recording settings edit blank. Type combo box standard down. Recording settings grouping. Recording settings edit selected. Browse button enter. Recording settings combo box MKV down. Track one checkbox not checked. So it was like eight times tab, I think, what we had to press here. And now we're on a list of checkboxes. Not a radio box, but a checkbox. Track two checkbox checked. Track one checkbox not checked. Track two check three checkbox checked. Track four checkbox not checked. Track five checkbox not checked. Track six checkbox not checked. So as you can hear, we have track one not checked, track two and three checked, and track four, five, and six unchecked. And that is because when I'm recording something with an OBS, all I want to record is only track two and three. I, in my case, could also check track one, which, as we've learned before, contains all the audio sources mixed into one output. But I'm usually not recording this because I'm recording track two and three already, which contain those audio information on separate tracks. So I can split them apart, as I've explained in another video, which I would link in the info card if you've not seen that before, and in the video description below, and post-process them the way I need. For example, applying various different effects to my voice so that I can rid of background noises, compress it, and all this kind of stuff. Although OBS can actually do this on its own, I feel better recording the pure dry signal and post-processing it manually, we have a lot of time to actually figure out what I need to do and then again have my screen reader signal unprocessed. And that is possible thanks to OBS being able to record my different sources at various different audio tracks. Six to be precise. That is the setting that you need to change here. If you're planning to only record things and not stream, then I'd recommend you to select only track one and two here and deselect three through six because you don't need to record the separate audio tracks if you're not planning to use them. After changing the settings here, make sure to shift tab a few times and hit OK so that you actually saved your changes. Now to the most important thing, how to configure your output devices to which track they should actually go. But before we're doing this, please consider following me on Twitter where I update you on a regular basis with all the stuff that I'm doing that I'm thinking about to do and all those kind of information that might be interesting to you between the videos that I'm posting weekly. And if you enjoy the content, please subscribe to the channel or leave a comment down in the comment box below the video. It really helps the channel and I always love to get in contact with you. So what we now need to do, and we're back in the OBS main window, we need to find the audio sources. I won't be explaining to you how you can actually add audio sources because this is basically the same for everyone and it is just as accessible to us as for sighted people. So you can follow any other OBS tutorial out there to find your way around OBS and find out how you can add the audio sources to your scenes. I'm also not describing how you can actually manage and set up your scenes and scene collections and all this kind of stuff. If you're interested in seeing such a tutorial as well, then feel free to let me know in the comment section and I will see if I can expand this video into a video series where I go through all the different details of OBS in an accessible way. But for now, I have my scenery already set up to contain two audio sources, my microphone and my loopback device. And my microphone is an ACO capture and my input is basically a microphone input. So if we tap through the OBS main window, let's do this here. Audio mixer window, properties for microphone slash air iPhone audio button. There we go. We need to find one of those properties. We need to hit space on that. Space. And we won't get any feedback unless we press the up or down arrow. So let's do that. Up 64 window, lock volume, lock checked. Advanced audio properties, alt plus A. So we have to press the down arrow once and then the up arrow and you will find advanced audio properties. And that's where we need to go. Let's set end on that. Up 28.0.2, 64 bit, windows, profile, conferencing scenes. Recording window, advanced audio properties, dialogue, balance, status, mono tracks, name, sync, offset, audio, monitoring, volume, active, active, LR, active sources only, checkbox, checked. So as you might have heard, we are actually getting a lot of speech feedback here, which is not useful. But let me tell you, we need to tap. Close button, enter. Grouping. Percent checkbox not checked. Volume for ACO input captures main button 0.0. 0. 
So that might be interesting to you. It's the volume of the input device, which in my case is ACO input capture, which is my microphone, and it's set to 0.00 dB, which is basically just input volume, right? So the volume that is coming from my interface is routed through directly into OBS. Monodynamics for ACO input capture checkbox not checked. Sync offset for ACO input capture spin button 0ms. Audio monitoring for ACO input capture combo box monitor off down. So this is a combo box where you can actually monitor your input, which can be kind of interesting and important if you're doing mixing stuff and you want to prepare for streaming or something like that and you want to see how your microphone balances against, for example, your music or whatever you're trying to stream to. That's not what we're searching for, though. Track one checkbox checked. And that is what we're searching for. We do have Track two checkbox checked. several checkboxes here, as we have seen in the recording output settings in OBS. And in here, we have got the user six and... Track one, checkbox checked. Track one is checked because I want it to go to all the Twitch, YouTube, whatever else streams. Track two, checkbox checked. Track two is checked because that is what I expected it to be on. Like I want to track two to be my microphone recording. Track three, checkbox not checked. And track three, four, five, six are all not checked because I don't want my microphone to bleed to any of those tracks. And that's what you need to check or uncheck. By default, I think for all the new audio devices that you add to your scenes, and add as sources, you will always get all six tracks checked, but that's obviously not what you want usually. So go ahead and uncheck the tracks that you want it to be on. Track four checkbox not checked. Track, five, track six checkbox not checked. So after you've reached track six, you need to tap once more. And the great thing is that you have got all the audio sources within this one window. So you can configure all your sources in this one window, although you've pressed properties only on the one audio device. So after doing this for your first audio source, just hit tab. Volume for microphone slash air iPhone audio spin button minus 6.0. And there you go. We already have the same settings for our second audio source, which is by my default is set to minus six because I don't want my screen reader to be just as loud as my microphone level. So I usually put this down by minus six dB. Um, just tap a few more times. And there we go. I've got track one checked again because I want my screen reader or music or whatever else, Reaper output, go to Twitch. Track two checkbox not checked. I don't have track two checked because track two is the single audio stream that is meant to hold my microphone and only my microphone. Track three checkbox checked. But I have track three checked, which is meant to hold my screen reader slash music slash Reaper slash whatever application music only. Track four checkbox not checked. And all the other tracks are unchecked. So this is basically where you control which audio signal goes to which track. And in the OBS settings, you control which tracks you actually record when recording a video with an OBS. And you can also control which stream you're actually sending to Twitch, YouTube, whichever stream platform you're using and streaming to. And that's already it. That's all you need to know about configuring OBS to record all the audio streams that you have. You can record up to six of them, which can be useful if you want, for example, to record your microphone, screen reader, and game on separate tracks and want to mix them afterwards. It is definitely possible with an OBS, and I wish you best of luck to getting around with OBS. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comment section or follow me on Twitter and let me know over there. Thanks for watching this video and until the next one. Bye bye.